and we're back all right so for now drop the wedge drop the the gate or the flatbed hook the flatbed up to the dually and then hit the road running off to Kentucky show you what you got here oh by the way before we get too far into this other than liking and subscribing these straps I want to thank my T products for becoming sponsor of the channel so I will drop a link down in the description below which is an affiliate link so I do get a kickback off of it if you guys buy anything off their website they reached out I use all their products all my straps are my T products all these beautiful straps I've had these for these are two inch straps and I've had those for probably oh I'm trying to think of how long I remember when I got them it's been I've been using those for over a year I actually picked them up from my T products in Ohio when I bought those so check it out there'll be a link down in the description but for now back down there drop this and get it hooked up to the dually this isn't something you see every day. Getting these out of sheets. That's the lowest price around here in Pennsylvania. Still in PA. Going now, actually we just got on 70. We're headed out. We just got off the turnpike. So nice new sheets. Got some parking, truck parking, probably uh, I don't know, 10, 15 spots. The only bad part is there's nowhere to pull up when you get fuel, so just have to find a spot. But they must have just finished this thing because look, there's not even there's hardly any like oil stains or fuel spots or anything on the concrete. Most of all that is just from the concrete itself, which is it's not all slicked up with diesel fuel getting all over your boots. Uh, get these uh, just check the straps. These are riding good. I think they say somewhere around 10,000 pounds These are about 3,000 pounds a piece or so Plus they estimate for uh, there's a bunch of like hardware and stuff in there Which is nice because they actually include everything in the weight butt flap hangers So you actually get a true weight If you're trying to be conscious of your weight or anything like that This truck sounds good One day, young grasshopper, one day. All right, let's get to fueling. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. So I was in there getting a drink. Got me a lemonade. This lady's about to run me over. And uh, the card machine wasn't working and they said oh new machine still not working and I said uh, well how long you guys been open well they opened this morning that explains why the concrete's so new but take a look at these dump trucks rolling out here two of them here same company looks good all right back on the road we go uh, so it's uh, it's like 7, 7.30ish, and uh, we're making good progress. We're in Lancaster, Ohio right now. I'm going to stop and get dinner because I haven't eaten since early this, or earlier today. Uh, but I hate taking up a spot at this time of night at the truck stop where there's a TA here. But I also don't want to be that guy that's blocking up the parking lot. So I look, there's a bunch of spots left. Cause I don't want to take up a spot of someone that's trying to uh, trying to park for the night and get some rest. I'm beside this truck, that, this trailer that's dropped, and uh, I'm not going to be long, so I'll just run in here and and there's plenty of reserve spots. So if they need parking that bad, they just unfortunately would have to pay for it. There's like 30 reserve spots open, but I just want to be able to get in and out quickly, check my load, get some dinner, and. Uh, Probably go about another hour or so down the road and, and find a room for the night. 
now we're, while we're talking about finding a room for the night, what I think I'm gonna end up doing is trading in the mega cab. It would be nice to have another dually, a truck that could be a personal and a work truck, and just not rely on a single cab. Yeah, the Freightliner is going to be on the road, but it'd just be nice to have another dually just in case. Like, I can't even move the wedge with my, uh, with the Mega Cab. I can't even, I couldn't even move it with the, uh, the Denali just because of it, the, the, those trucks being short beds. It'll hit the cab without, as soon as you turn the wheel, it'll hit the cab. So, having a long bed dually just as a, uh, a spare truck, personal truck. They put like 19.5s on it, make it look okay, and then use it when I need to. Excuse me. Especially on the overnight trips like this. Save me some money on a room. Who knows? Market's good to sell. Market's just not good to buy right now. I don't even know where I'm going. Walking around in circles talking. Eyes are watering. Sleeting out here. Let's get some dinner. Well, we made it to delivery. This is kind of convenient for this place. It is right beside the truck plant for Ford in Louisville, Kentucky. A military truck, look at that thing. A truck's about an hour behind me or so, you know, ELD things. Uh, so he'll be here shortly. He's got another three of these on. Chuck's been helping me out, doing a great job, so. Forklift driver is going to come through, tell me where to go, and uh, we'll head towards our pickup. So I'm picking up from a Hertz rental cars. We're here now. Sometimes these go really smooth. Sometimes you're, these are a pain in the butt, but I do see a guy at the gate here. He's sitting in a car. I guess he's checking people in as they come in. So hopefully I uh, finding somebody to help you is half the battle. So at least maybe he'll be able to point me in the right direction. There are two SUVs that we're taking back to, uh, taking back to Maryland with us. Holy crap. In and out in two minutes. And he even told me where they're parked. Thank you, Hertz in Louisville, Kentucky. I always get nervous coming to a Hertz. Um, I've had pretty bad experiences with them. Uh, not this one, obviously. Those guys are great. Uh, just unorganized, but the guy was on top of it today, so I appreciate that. So, walk out to my second vehicle. Got a flat tire, but I got my Milwaukee pump. Let's see if it'll put any air in it. Because I can't load in this lot. I'm parked. Over there, I'm going to get turned around and load down there on the side of the road, which isn't a big deal. But well, I want to at least see if I can get some air in this tire to get it out of here. But let's see if I can turn this off and hear if there's any air coming out because it's only got half a PSI in it. Well, I got 11 pounds in it. I mean, that's enough to get the tire up off the, the sidewalk and, and get out here to the road in Louisville. And I was just on the phone with my dad because a UPS plane came in. It must be a major hub for UPS because of uh, being towards the middle of the country. But let's, uh, let's pull out here, we'll pull our cars out here. And if you guys know what I gotta do, we've got the 36 footer and we've got two SUVs, so we gotta go up over the back with one of them. So what we're gonna do is use this hill right here. This car in front of me is my first car. Use this hill to lessen the angle on the ramps. And load one up over the back. Now when we get home, it'll be easier because I will, when I get home, I'll just use a hill at the house because I'm going to put them on the wedge and take them to where they need to be delivered. But 
obviously we brought the flatbed out here to deliver the freight and uh and uh, it's a little easier to unload at the house and then just take them on the wedge i gotta hook up to the wedge anyway so i got more cars to move busy but busy but good i'll take it All right, so I'm getting fuel here and uh, I don't know, somewhere in West Virginia. We're coming up 79. So I'm getting ready to back out of this spot and then uh, pull up to the pumps. I had to pull in because this place was an absolute cluster. Still is. Anyway, so last night, I'm, I, I remember the time was I looked at my phone. It was 104 a.m woke up to I guess no one's gonna let me back out of this thing so I woke up to this loud popping noise which from my experience with weapons was gunshots so I hop up out of bed real quick and by that I mean real quick make sure I don't hit that hit this fucking drive in that parked in the no parking spot um, so I hopped out of bed real quick and uh, looked out the window and what it actually was and if you guys have ever been to a carnival and, and this was a carnival game where you pay five bucks and they let you take a sledgehammer to a car and that loud like metal banging noise you get from hitting hitting like the, the metal body of a vehicle so hop out of bed look out the window and this woman is absolutely destroying this car i mean she's taking her foot leaning back and just kicking the door she's kicking the taillight the uh the red cover on the taillight the glass is falling on the ground she's running by and she's smacking the mirrors backwards so they fly off the car. The one's hanging there by a wire. I'm like, holy crap. I, like, at first I thought someone was getting shot. Then I realized it was this lady destroying this car. So I keep watching because it's right outside my window. I mean, it's 15 feet from my window. And I keep watching. I keep watching. Here comes this guy. And they are arguing. He's like telling her just to stop and screaming. And she's screaming back. And she just they're like doing laps around this car and like she'll kick a door and then keep like running and like he's behind her and i just kept watching to make sure like it didn't get like deadly or anything and he's like holding her to try to like get her to calm down and she's like trying to headbutt him so this goes on for like three or four minutes or so and i think it was an employee of um an employee of the, the hotel itself came out and made them leave because when I woke up in the morning the car was gone too and but the glass and everything from the taillights was still laying there so I woke up in the middle of the night, middle of the night thinking I'm getting shot at now it's just a domestic dispute domestic dispute in the parking lot all right so I hope you guys can hear me okay um, I've got the the camera pointed out the windshield it's dark it's uh it's only 6 p.m but it's it's dark and we're headed over uh, 68 in Maryland. But I wanted to share something with you that is a little concerning to me. Uh, it's a situation that happened. So a little backstory. Uh, a friend of mine owns a, well, he runs a dealership. It's the one I haul all the trucks for that you see all the time. And sometimes he'll get trucks from locations or stuff that I can't get. And Instead of him posting them on Central Dispatch, I will, and by no means am I making any profit off of that, so I'm not a broker. I just, I'll verify the guy's information, make sure their DOT number's active, verify their insurance, and just try to, like, kind of just help him out as a friend. So, I post uh, a truck for him, and uh, something I couldn't get that he needed brought in that he bought. So I post it, and while I'm loading the 
the two cars uh, right outside the airport at Hertz today, I get a phone call. And I had my AirPods in, and I noticed there was a Maryland number, and I knew I had vehicles posted, um, and it came up with a name. And I'm like, oh, I'll answer this. Maybe it's someone that wants to haul these vehicles. So I answered, and that's what it was, and he asked a few questions about it, and I said, hey, by the way, he called me last night, and I hadn't had a chance to post it. There's actually another truck there. It's a 3500. Uh, I'm not sure if it's dually or not, but it's on. Um, if you have room, you know, I can I'll double the rate and you can do one pick, one drop. So, this is where it gets kind of scary. I verified the guy's information. He's got active insurance, he's got active authority. So, it's not like we're, these are show trucks we're hauling, these are, these are work trucks. So, I wasn't too worried about anything. So, he asked me. Um, is the 3500 a dually? So I went back and I looked at the, uh, the, the gate pass from Mannheim, and it usually will say DRW or SRW, so you know if it's a dual rear wheel or a single rear wheel. So he said the dually, uh, the 3500 isn't a dually, right? I said, I just looked, it is. Because it took me a little bit to get back because I was still loading those cars and strapping them down. He said, I can't take dually. I said, okay, just grab the regular cab for the price we agreed on. Perfect, you have anything else? I said, no, just those two. And this is, okay, this is where it gets scary. He said, you think dually will fit on my three car? I'm like, he doesn't know that I'm a trans, that I transport myself, but how am I supposed to know if it, what kind of three car you have and if it's gonna fit on there? And I said, wedge question mark? He said, yes. I said, I fit them on mine, but my trailer's only 96 inches wide. It's like Kaufman, it's gonna be 102 wide. I can try, but I don't know if they will fit. I got small strap, dually heavy LLS. What most you could pay for that? So I didn't know what LLS stand stood for. Like if it was BRB or LOL. So I looked it up and it was comes out to dually heavy, laughing like shit. Okay, professional, love it. And then because he said what most you could what most you could do that. You could what most you could pay for that. I said, what I have it listed for, if you can't take it, please don't pull it from the auction. So my thought is, someone like that going down the road has no idea if a vehicle will even fit on their trailer. Whatever they mean by small strap, it's very concerning. The vehicle was dropped off. It was It's a rough work truck, so not really worried about it, but I can only imagine the quality of work that would come from somebody that unprofessional. All right, so we're here to deliver the Kia. It's just unloaded it over the back, which everything went fine. Found this good hill in front of us to use. I forgot to mention this the other day because I noticed it the other day when I got the, uh, the dispatch, but a Certus has been Certus has been getting a little, little sneaky on their dispatch with uh, multiple picks and multiple drops. Can I get out of here? I'm stuck in this parking lot. Uh, so this one was actually one pick, and it says two vehicles, like on the dispatch, on Central Dispatch. It says two vehicles from Louisville to Cockeysville, Maryland, which is, I'm in Cockeysville right now. <clears throat> but when you get the dispatch like actually sent to you, it says with the Raycon, it says um, one pick, two drops. The drops are like 30 minutes apart, which kind of sucks. And it is what it is. I was going to take the load anyways. But you know, a little sneaky with that. I'm glad I, I knew to look for that because that could get you in a bad spot if you would have just delivered both here, got them signed off on, and then have one at the wrong dealer. They're owned by the same company, but... 
obviously they don't want them at the same building. So I use this hill here to unload off the back, which pretty much made the, uh, the angle of the ramps flat coming right off the back. We've already put everything away. I just gotta get this one delivered real quick and then head to the house and hook back up to the wedge.